Wonderwall was a 1995 hit for the rock band Oasis and for lead singer Liam Gallagher and his songwriting brother Noel. Long out of the band and estranged from his brother, Noel Gallagher is talking this morning with Anthony Mason for the record. Two and a half years, that's all it took for the British band Oasis. One moment, Noel Gallagher was unemployed. The next, he was on top of the world. It all happened incredibly quickly. It's insane. That trajectory from nothing to we were the biggest band in the world. It was brief, but we were there. You know, we, and it was kind of like breathtaking, really. Maybe I don't really want to know. Oasis 1994 album, definitely maybe, was then the fastest selling debut in British history. Their follow up. What's the story, Morning Glory? Sold 22 million copies I'm sure you and produced the worldwide smash, Wonderwall. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. When the band sold out two nights at Nebworth, England in 1996, 2.6 million people applied for the 250,000 tickets. Why do you think it happened? Timing, Nirvana, the grunge thing had come to its natural end and the scene was set for something. You know, it happened to be us. Because the people don't know what they want until you give it to them. Right. What did you give to them? Songs, melodies, attitude, and a kind of irreverence. So but Noel and his younger brother, Liam, fought from the start. Liam, the lead singer, was all sneer and swagger. Noel, the songwriter, was the band Svengali. It was a combustible collaboration. As much as you and Liam have bickered over the years, could you have been successful without each other? No chance. No chance? No way. I wouldn't have got anywhere without him, and he wouldn't have got anywhere without me. Right. As simple as that. The Gallagher brothers came out of Manchester, England, the gritty city George Orwell once called the belly and guts of the nation. This is where we're from, you know, and it is extremely working class. On an unseasonably lovely Manchester day. I was kind of thinking you might get a bit of the, uh, the Manchester experience, which is sideways rain. <laughs> Gallagher took us to the playing fields of his youth. These were all bowling greens. Yeah. And we used to sit in there and take drugs and listen to music on little tiny little tape recorders and do a bit of growing up. His musical education started at Sifter's record store, name checked in Noel's song, Shaker Maker. But yeah, I used to be in there all the time. You picked up a guitar at 13, is that right? Yeah, early teenager, yeah. It was, it was, nobody not quite knows why the guitar was in the house because I'm not from a musical family. Right. The Gallagher's mother, Peggy, worked in a school and biscuit factory. Their father, who left when Noel was a teenager, was alcoholic and abusive. You said something effective that your father effectively beat the talent into you. <laughs> a good line, that, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What did you mean? It gave me the drive to make something of myself. Mm -hmm. I think I definitely withdrew into myself, into my own world, mm -hmm. as a reaction to that. And the guitar, that thing, became my world, you know what I mean? I've never written a song about it, right? which is fascinating. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Well, I've never, you... been, I've never been to see a therapist yeah. until today. <laughs> 
By the early 90s, Noel had moved into an apartment in downtown Manchester. I haven't been in here since the day that I left. Where he wrote all of Oasis' first album. I wrote Rock and Roll Star in this, in this room on an electric guitar with the amp, with the guy underneath me banging on the floor with a brush handle. You know, and the first line is, I live my life in the city, you know, there's no easy way out, and it's kind of like, this is it. Musically, how would you describe your chemistry with Lynn? I think that was the strength of the band, was my songs and his thing, whatever that thing is. So, <laughs> 99.9% .9 of the population see him as one thing. I see him as another. Yeah. Because I'm his brother, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? What do you see him as? What do I see him as? <laughs> pain in the ass. <laughs> A pain in the ass. Yeah. Their fights were epic. One notorious battle, recorded after Liam was arrested for being drunk, was released as a single and made the British charts. If you think rock and roll no, is getting arrested... Rock and roll is about being yourself, and I don't want to f about it. Rock and roll is about music, 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 music. It's not about you, it's not about me. After seven albums that all went to number one in Britain, Noel quit the band in 2009. And I know that annoys people, fans in particular, yeah. but it's not about them. And if anybody doubts, <laughs> my resolve, then I pity them. I pity them. Do you guys talk to each other now? No. No. No, there's too much been said. Is it beyond repair? For me it is, yeah. Now it got personal, and he kind of brought my wife and kids into it very publicly. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of like, okay, if you want to go there, be prepared to take this to the grave, mm -hmm. okay? That sounds callous and cold, but that's who I am, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. He has his own band now, the High Flying Birds. They just released their third album, Who Built the Moon? The late Beatles producer, George Martin, once called Noel Gallagher the finest songwriter of his generation. But he admits his lyrics at times are a mystery even to him. Do you know what champagne supernova means? No idea. You know, slowly walking down the hall faster than a cannonball. What? Gallagher sang it on his last tour. I was thinking, what is this song about? And then I happened to glance up and there's a guy and he, and he had his shirt in one hand and his fist clenched and he was crying his eyes out. And I was like, that's what it means. We were getting high. I'm not sure songs need to have literal meanings. I don't know. They're part of people's lives. 